Hi, and welcome to another Steelscape Nano course, Metal Roofing and Siding Considerations for Marine Environments. In this course, we'll discuss the impact of marine environments on corrosion, metal enhancement options to improve performance, and other design and installation tips to avoid premature corrosion in these environments. Today, I'm joined by Michelle Vondren, Steelscape's technical manager and metal coatings expert, to discuss the application of metal in marine environments. So before we get started, Michelle, can we first hear a bit of your background in the metal and coatings industry? Sure thing, Richard. Thanks. So yeah, I started my career, um, I have a degree in chemistry, so I was a paint research chemist, uh, the first part of my career, specifically for this industry, pre-painted uh, metals. And then I joined Steelscape about 18 years ago now. I can't believe it's been quite that long. Uh, and have held various quality and technical roles uh, throughout the years. Um, I'm very active in the Cool Roof Rating Council, as, as well as the Energy Star Roofing Program, and I do represent the company on the ZAC Association and the National Coil Coders Association as well. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Michelle. So I think it's first to understand the type of metal we're talking about, pre-painted metal. So I think in first, Michelle, if you could give a quick overview of what pre-painted metal is and why it is used for metal roofing and siding. Yeah, absolutely. So pre-painted metal is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's metal that is painted prior to final fabrication or forming uh, into an end product. We do this on what we call a coil coating line, which is a continuous process. Uh, the coil runs continuously and gets painted all at once and is then rewrapped again at the end of the line. Uh, the paint is applied uh, very, very quickly and cured very quickly. These lines run anywhere from 100 to 700 feet per minute. And the paint is applied and cured or baked on in 15 to 30 seconds on average. This is the most common process for pre-painted metal uh, in roofing and siding construction products. Uh, it's very flexible, it's robust, it's efficient. Um, you know, and highly controlled as far as quality and consistency of final product. Fantastic. And so what are the different elements that make up a pre-painted metal paint system? Yeah, so by the time you're done, you've got multiple layers. You have your base steel, uh, which is a, the most common substrate, but it could be aluminum as well. If it's steel, it's then going to have a metallic coating on it of either galvanized or galvalum, the zinc aluminum mixture. We put a pretreatment on on the paint line, which uh, preps the surface for painting and provides for good adhesion to the final product. Then we put a primer on, uh, which provides corrosion protection as well as uh, making a nice, even, smooth surface for the top coat to go over. Then, of course, you apply the top coat, so that's the part that everyone's going to see once it's installed. That's your color and aesthetic uh, portion of the product. We also paint the back side of the strip, both with a primer and what we call a backer coat. This provides some color for exposed applications. It also helps protect the coil during transit and forming uh, and protects that top coat when the coil is wrapped up. And then there may be optional clear coats as well, uh, depending on the application. And so can these paint systems be enhanced for extreme environments? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we see this quite often. The most common is marine environment, of course, which we're going to talk a little bit more about, but also industrial applications, chemical processing and mining operations use metal buildings. And um, so we do run across that as well. Those are the two most common. Okay, so we just touched on marine environments. You know, what are they and why are not all marine environments the same? Yeah, unfortunately, um, they are not all the same. We wish we could have one definition for marine, but we don't. So obviously it's proximity to saltwater or the ocean. Um, it's usually defined by a supplier by a distance. Uh, the most common range out there is a thousand feet up to one mile. I would say the thousand foot to half mile mark is most prevalent, but not all marine environments are the same. And as you can see here in our lovely pictures, you know, we use two different examples on the West Coast, the Puget Sound, which is um, non-breaking surf, very mild, high amount of rainfall, you know, averages up to 42 inches per year. So a lot of natural rinsing and cleaning that goes on versus say Southern California, which only gets about 12 inches of rain per year, very dry, but has crashing breaking surf. So a lot of salt spray occurring right along the, the coastline and a lot of uh, salt laden fog of, of course too. So these are two different marine environments. The Puget Sound is considered a mild marine environment where Southern California would be considered um, a pretty harsh marine environment. And so to adapt for these environments, what modifications can be made to the paint system to make them suitable? 
The most typical modification we see is to bump up the primer and then add a clear coat layer. So uh, the primer will be the same primer you use for normal applications, just applied at a thicker film, often uh, four times the thickness we would see on a standard product. And that's going to give you a lot of corrosion protection. And then it may also require a clear coat, anywhere from 0.5 to 0.8 mils applied on top of your color coat. And again, just to give you a more robust paint system. Uh, aluminum, if you're working with aluminum, because of its inert nature to begin with and its lack of corrosion, you don't need to beef up the paint system quite as much as you do on steel. Um, it, the one caveat here that we always warn people about is the primer doesn't really change the overall look or color, but the clear coat can. Mm -hmm. So on lighter colors, the addition of that clear coat might shift the color visually a little bit to the yellow side. In your medium to dark colors, you're not going to see that. Uh, especially to the untrained eye, but it is something to be aware of. And the reason for this is that those clears are not actually truly completely clear. They have UV blockers and some other, other additives mixed in uh, to give them good protection and good long-term durability um, on exposure. And that's why they are a little bit yellow to the eye. And But it's not just the paint. I explain to us, Michelle, why the substrate or the coated metal underneath is also an important element to consider as part of these installations. Yeah, your substrate is your foundation, right? That's um, your anchor of the system, if you will. And it is very, very important to overall performance. So uh, especially when you get into marine environments or corrosive environments. Aluminum's the best. Uh, most people understand that aluminum's fairly inert, doesn't corrode very often or, or very much at all in a corrosive environment. Um, but if you move into steel, um, you're, you'll probably want to go with a 55% aluminum zinc coating. That would be your galvalum or zinc alum product that's out there in the industry. And then galvanized would be third. You can see on the uh, pictures there, this is real world testing out of a severe marine environment. Uh, just how well that aluminum zinc um, product does uh, across the board. Now, that said, aluminum, although great for corrosion, does have a few trade-offs in the building world, right? It is more expensive than steel, so cost becomes an issue. You have to go to a thicker gauge um, to get the same structural properties that you get in steel, and it's softer. Um, so your wind uplift values, your hail ratings, your structural integrity might be a little bit different and worse than steel. So that does need to be uh, taken into consideration when you're designing. Mm, no, some in important considerations. And then also material selection is just one part of the solution. What are some other important considerations when designing and installing metal roofing and siding in marine environments? Yeah, so once you've determined what substrate and paint system you need, then you have to consider installation, uh, which become, installation is always important uh, for pre-painted metal, but becomes even more important in a marine environment. So you always want to go with a concealed fastener panel design uh, near the ocean to minimize exposed openings and penetrations, which are just places where corrosion can start. Dissimilar metals or galvanic corrosion becomes a huge concern. It's probably the biggest thing we deal with in marine environments um, in the most problematic situations we run into. Uh, so that impacts your fasteners, um, your attachments, what else is going to be on that roof or in contact with that roof and how is that going to perform in a, um, a marine environment, a salt water environment. Slope and water runoff becomes more critical, right? You don't want standing salt water um, on one of these metal roofs because it's going to accelerate corrosion. And maintenance is beefed up. And most of the warranties will address this for a marine location. You got to do more frequent freshwater cleaning, especially in any sheltered areas like under the eaves or areas on the roof that might not get as much freshwater rainfall as other portions definitely need to be cleaned more frequently. So, uh, Michelle, you just touched on dissimilar metals. Could, could you explain it in a bit more detail as to what we mean by dissimilar metals and, and why it's such a significant issue? Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of a, a science refresher here for everyone. So we have what's called a galvanic chart, um, active metals all the way down to less active metals. And you can see that zinc and galvalum and aluminum steel are active metals, whereas stainless is a inactive or noble metal. So the further away they are on this chart, the more likely you're to have this condition of dissimilar metals or galvanic corrosion. But you need three things to happen. You need two dissimilar metals off this chart to be in direct contact with each other. Um, 
And you also need them to be in some kind of conducting or corrosive solution. And that can be air. It can be salt air. It can be salt water. It can be fog. It can be moisture, vapor. When that occurs, the less active metal, the more noble metal is going to perform better. And the less active metal is going to sacrifice itself to protect that noble metal in the scenario. So if you have a stainless fastener through a galvalume roof near the ocean, the galvalume is going to corrode preferentially to the stainless um, at, a, at a pretty quick rate too. It happens very quickly. And the more corrosive the environment, the faster uh, this process takes place. So again, this impacts your fastener selections, trim, gutters, clips, uh, anything that's going to be in contact uh, with the roof panels. Wow. Seems like a potentially serious issue. So maybe Michelle, do you want to share a few case studies, which, you know, really shows this in effect? Of course. Yeah. Pictures are worth a thousand words, right? At the end of the day. So uh, we have a couple of examples here. These were stainless fasteners. Um, you know, stainless fasteners are very common in the metal building, metal roofing industry. And they're an exceptional choice, except when you get near the salt water. Uh, you really want to stick with zinc or aluminum alloy or aluminum fasteners uh, for these conditions. So what we have here is a home. This is a private residence in Southern California, which as I spoke about earlier, is considered a pretty harsh marine environment. It's about 200 feet off the surf break, so it's right on the water. Uh, installed a beautiful galvalum painted roof with the right paint system. It had a high build paint system on it, but they used stainless fasteners uh, to attach the stainless gutter around the entire perimeter of the house. And within just a couple years, there's blistering of the paint that starts to occur. And this complaint always comes into us as my paint is failing. Well, the paint's failing because of the corrosion that's taking place underneath of it um, at that contact point with that fastener. So the paint starts to bubble up uh, and might actually start flaking away eventually. And if we go to the next slide, you can see that this gets more severe with time, right? It doesn't stop. So this is the same home several years later. And now we actually have such severe corrosion that's taken place that the paint has come off the surface and we are down to red rust, which means we've gotten through the metallic coating layer of the galvalume and are down to base steel. And this will continue until that panel is gone and completely consumed. I would like to point out that the stainless steel clip looks fantastic still, right? So it's, it's performing well because the galvalume panel is corroding in favor of it. And then you know, again, it's not just fasteners, it's anything else you might use um, on the roof. So this example is, a, again, a private residence in Southern California, constructed in 2004, high build paint system, they use the right paint system, it is galvalume panels. Um, we had a couple things going on at this residence. One, they recess stainless steel light canisters through the panels along the deck and patio areas without putting a barrier between the stainless steel and the galvalume. So we had dissimilar metal or galvanic corrosion occurring there. We also had a lot of sheltered areas. So all up underneath the patios there um, on this house are metal panels, which aren't getting any kind of rainfall or rinsing at all. But salt water seeps in between those joints and the corrosion process starts because it's not getting rinsed off. So you get this sort of creep, we call it edge creep, uh, at the edge of the panels because of the salt air and the salt vapor that's being held in there. The other uh, concerns that come up um, are cut edges, right? Again, we don't want it to have any cut edges, especially in a corrosive environment. If it can be avoided, you will get edge creep. Again, it presents as the paint bubbling up, but that's because the substrate underneath has been compromised and there's nothing left for the paint to hold on to anymore. Um, the example on the left here is a parapet uh, trim around a deck that had an aluminum track set on it for plexiglass, but was bolted down with a stainless steel bolt. So we have two things going on here. Not only do we have a stainless steel bolt that's causing a dissimilar metals issue, that parapet actually sloped inward to that plexiglass track and was holding water um, along that junction as well and causing premature corrosion. Fortunately, this home also has stainless steel rivets through its trim and hip pieces, which are starting to show very early signs of galvanic corrosion around each one. And then sheltered areas. Um, the picture on the lower right here is bare product. 
uh, near the a marine location, but it's inside a walkway on a commercial building. Um, and you can see the condensation pattern that has formed on those panels. And that is all salt laden um, moisture that's been trapped there and isn't getting rinsed off. And the metallic coating is starting to corrode because of it. Thank you, Michelle. And did you have some other examples with copper or treated wood or some of those examples as well too? Yeah, those are problematic sort of regardless of environment. So um, copper is very corrosive to coated steel and really there should not be any kind of runoff or contact between them regardless of the environment. And um, that plays into treated wood. So most wood that's been fire retarded treated, um, they use a copper solution to do that. And that copper can leach out. Um, so if that is allowed to drip from say a, a wood deck down onto metal panels, you will get accelerated corrosion. Uh, but as a little bit separate from being in a marine environment that could occur anywhere potentially. Gotcha. And so, you know, long warranties are a desirable element of painted metal products. What impact do marine environments have on warrantability? Yeah, so in a marine location, you can get a warranted product uh, from most suppliers. That's really not going to be much of an issue, but it is going to be somewhat reduced. You know, instead of a 30 or 40 year warranty in a, a non-marine, non-corrosive location, you might be looking at 20 or 25 years instead, which is still a decent amount of time. And, and it's still going to be a robust warranty for chalk and fade and film integrity, but it will be reduced. So, you know, a word of caution, though, is make sure you read those warranties thoroughly. Uh, see if they call out the definition of a marine environment um, and what that means to the warranty. And don't get caught up in the headline, right, of lifetime or 30 years, because that may be lifetime or 30 years for only one component of the performance, not all three film integrity chalk and fade that we typically see. So as boring as it might be to read a warranty, mm -hmm. read it through and make sure you understand what you're getting. Interesting. And then those warranties too will likely also stipulate the need for those primers or clear coats or those other elements that you mentioned earlier. Correct. And definitely have the conversation with whoever your panel supplier or installer is going to be. Um, a good installer and a good supplier should be well versed in their warranty. They should understand what their marine limitations are and, and can have a conversation with you about what's going to be appropriate and what will be covered under warranty and what will not. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so let's sum up. So what are the key things to plan for when using metal in a marine project? Again, know your environment, right? Know that proximity to salt water. And if there's any doubt in your mind at all about whether it qualifies or would be defined as marine or corrosive, ask. Ask your supply chain uh, to review it. Uh, that's a normal process uh, for those of us in the coil coating world is to review specific sites and give feedback. Uh, so make sure that everyone's on the same page and that you do that as early on in the project as possible because some of these marine systems do have a longer lead time, they are custom orders. So make sure you understand the impact on your schedule and your cost to get the right product uh, on your project. Again, review the warranty, make sure everyone understands the warranty, no one's caught off guard. Uh, you don't want to install your product and then find out it doesn't have a warranty because of its uh, location. And then again, avoid dissimilar metals. I cannot stress it enough. Make sure you understand which accessories and fasteners should be used. Again, a reputable supplier and manufacturer is going to have technical bulletins and guidelines around this that they can review with you um, prior to um, making final purchases and determinations. Wow, fantastic. Thank you, Michelle. What a great overview on uh, metal installations in marine environments. Until next time, thanks very much for your time and thanks for watching. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you.